Hi everyone, in this video I will show you how to create and read CSV files in C Sharp. Other than that, you will see how to work with different options like removing headers, adding custom names, appending data, formatting dates and mapping columns to properties while reading a CSV file. A lot to cover and let's start. So I already have prepared project and inside you can find the person class that I will use for both writing and reading actions. Also, to be able to work with CSV files, I already installed the CSV helper package. Now, let's open the right CSV class, create a new static method, and name it write persons. Inside, I will first create a new list of persons. This one will be used to write all the persons to the CSV file. Now I need the code to create the CSV file. So let's add a using directive and create a new writer variable, which I will instantiate with a stream writer class and provide the name of the file I want to create. Next, I need another using directive and inside a new CSV variable, which I instantiate with the CSV writer class. Here I have to provide two arguments, the writer itself and the culture as invariant culture. I use this culture to write in a file in an invariant way, as different cultures have different ways of representing numbers and dates. If you like, you could also specify your own culture. This becomes especially relevant when reading the data, as you need the same culture info you use to write the file. Also here, let's call the write records method and pass the list of data as an argument. Now let's open the program class and call this method using the write CSV static class. Now once I run the app, a CSV file named filepersons.csv will appear where our executable is. So let's open this file and see what it looks like. We can see both the header and the data part inside the file. Also in this file we can see that header names and order are the same as how we define them in our person class. Of course if we want we can change that using the name and index attributes. So for the id property let's use the name attribute and provide the identifier as a new name. Also, let's use the index attribute and set it to zero. For the name property, let's use the same index attribute and just set it to two. And finally, for the tax pair property, let's set the index attribute to one. So, as you can see, I changed the order of these properties for the file output. Now, Let's run the app again and in the file we can see the different order. Of course, we can also decide to omit the headers altogether. In that case, we need to use a CSV configuration object while constructing our CSV writer. So let's do that. Let's create a new config variable and use a new CSV configuration where I will provide the culture as an argument. Also, I have to set the has header record property to false. Now, all I have to do is remove the culture from here and add the configuration variable. Also, let's simply change the file name and append no header just to have a new file. And that's all it takes. Let's run the app again, open the file, and as you can see, the headers are no longer there. Now, we have to pay attention to one thing, that every time we run our app, the old CSV file will be overwritten, but sometimes we would like the data to be appended at the end of the file. CSV helper doesn't provide a method to do this, as opening and writing to a file is not its responsibility, but we can achieve this by using a file stream 
and then constructing our stream writer by using that file stream. Of course, we shouldn't write the headers if we are appending the data. So, to see this in action, let's create another using directive and a new stream variable. For this, I will use the file.open method and provide the name of the file and the file mode.append to specify that I want to append the content. Also, for the stream writer argument, I will now use the stream. And that's it. Of course, since now I am appending the data to a file, it would be best to check if the file exists at all. But we know it exists, so let's leave it as is. So, let's run our project to see the output. And as you can see, we now have some additional entries. Now, let's see how to work with formatting dates while writing into a CSV file. First, let's add a new property to our person class. I need a date time property and let's name it date of birth. Next, I will simply modify the list of persons by populating this new property for each person. So, let's run the app and check how the date is written. You can see both date and time here. But what about if you are not interested in the exact time, but rather in the date in the year, month, day format, for example? Well, we can make that happen with another attribute. Let's open the person class and add the format attribute on top of the date of birth property and provide the date format as year, month, day. At this point, I can run the app again and we can see the change. Everything works as expected. Great. Now, let's focus on the reading part. But just before I do that, I want to make all these attributes as comments inside the person class first. Now, after I've done that, let's open the read CSV class. And here, create a new static method named read CSV file. Reading from the CSV file is very similar to creating it. That said, let's first read the file with the headers. To start, I need a using directive and inside a reader variable, which I will instantiate with a new stream reader class and provide a file name as an argument. Also, let's add another using directive, this time with a CSV variable and use the CSV reader class, where I will provide the reader as the first argument and the culture as the second one. To read records, I will use the CSV variable, call the getRecords method and provide the person as the type. Also, let's simply print all the values to the console. As we can compare with writing to CSV file, here we use a stream reader instead of a stream writer and also use the CSV reader instead of the CSV writer. That said, let's navigate to the program class hide this one and enable the call to other method. Let's run the application and we can see the values printed here. So the reading part is working great. Of course, just to show you, I already modified the files for the reading actions. Now to continue, let's see how to read the data from a CSV file without headers. If we try to read the CSV file without the headers this way, we would get an error. This means I have to specify some additional configuration while reading the file. So, let's add a new configuration variable and call the CSV configuration constructor where I will pass the required culture. Also, let's change the name of the file I want to read and instead of the culture here, I will use the configuration variable. And that's all it takes. I can run the app now and you can see the result is printed. So let's continue. This result is printed well because if you check the order of the properties in the class and the columns of the file, you will see they are the same. But let's try to modify the column order of this file. 
I will move the boolean column at the first index. If I try to run the app now, I'll get an error for sure because the CSV helper can't map the results properly. To fix this, we have two ways to map columns to properties in our class. The first one is to use annotations to specify the index. So, in this class, I will uncomment all the index attributes and also I have to modify the first index to 1 and the third attribute to 0. I can run the app now and you can see the result is printed. The second and more powerful way is to use a mapping. But first, let's again comment on all the index properties inside this person class. Then, let's create a new class, name it person map, clear these things out, and make it public. This class must inherit from the class map class, and I have to provide the type I want to map to. Now, let's create a constructor here and simply add our mapping rules. You can see the code is easy to understand. I use the map method and map each property using the index method and providing the position as an argument. Now to use this map, I have to navigate to the read CSV class and here use the CSV variable and the context property to call the register class map method where I have to provide the name of the map class. Now I can start the app again and you can see the proper result. Finally, let's see some other options that we have with the configuration, for example, delimiters and comments. The CSV file can contain comments and can use a different delimiter than the comma. Of course, we can specify this in the configuration as well. The default delimiter is comma, while the default comment is hashtag. But if our file uses different values, we can specify that in the configuration using the delimiter property or the comment property. Of course, you can see a lot more properties that you can configure here. So that's it. We covered a lot of features here and I can finish the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.